just share the notes again. Second, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so um, see, we are looking at a lot of um, information about raising up leaders, uh, a lot of information about, um, you know, uh, about coaching. Uh, you know others and so on so it's it's good for us to you know go back to these things once in a while okay so it's it's difficult to remember everything right uh, and also you know even as we are uh, leading a cell group it's difficult to remember all these things but it's good to you know go back to these things um to these uh, principles and uh, to these guidelines once in a while uh, as you start leading a cell group, right, to be able to do this, put to put in practice. Um, so that's the that's the thing. So so for me, maybe um, the greatest learning actually will happen when we personally lead a cell group, right? When we have, uh, and I'm sure you know, even as you've been listening uh, to all this, uh, a lot of things would would make sense you know if you've already led the cell group that, that doesn't mean that you know uh, the other things you know it, it may not make sense at all for those who have not led cell groups no uh, there can be learning but um, if you put this to practice you know maybe if you uh, if you've never led a life group led a cell group and uh, well just you and maybe two others maybe you know maybe just another person if you were to start one and uh, uh, then that would give the greatest um, you know opportunity or the greatest uh, learning uh, will happen uh, during that time as well right so so it's good to uh, do that um, to continue to uh, you know put to practice right whatever we've learned and and there the learning can be uh, definitely you know it's a practical learning right whatever we've learned we are trying it out and uh, and in you know in uh, leading others in uh, raising up other leaders these are things that we need to be actually doing in order to have the greatest of learnings right so so it goes hand in hand uh, so just wanted to mention that right um so all these things uh, we can actually use it as a ready reckoner you know when you say all these things i'm just talking about these resources uh, we can refer to them time and again and go back to it time and again and uh, which will be helpful okay um so so we don't have to really you know uh, figure these things out right from the start okay maybe uh, or you know many mistakes can be avoided if we would just equip ourselves in this um, and intentionally do this right do these things do these you know carry out these principles these truths and instructions um, then we will see that okay uh, you know there are the far less mistakes right because and and the thing is that since we are dealing with people um, you know uh, mistakes have consequences uh, people um, you know it's 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 uh, we need to go back to again re-establishing uh, relationship etc so um, it's good that we have these uh, principles in our hearts and uh, have these truths ingrained in us um, and then so we don't have to you know we can avoid it's not like we will never make mistakes yes we will but we can avoid a lot of them right okay so we looked at um, two things right when it comes to strategies of a coach we said okay we have to forge or establish a partnership secondly we looked at how we need to inspire commitment um, third one is to grow the skills okay to so, um, to build skills in people to ensure that people know um, they can carry out 
and how they need to do certain things. You know, here when when we talk about cell groups, we're talking about you know what are some things that we can talk about. What are some skills that a cell group leader would would need? Right? Some of the things that we have seen. Uh, well, the skill to facilitate rather than to share or preach. Right? Uh, well, preaching definitely is is a good thing, and uh, it's uh, it's something for all believers to develop. Right? Maybe even handling a Bible study. When it comes to cell groups specifically, if you're looking at a skill, it is to facilitate a discussion, right? To facilitate a discussion, to make sure that people are sharing, um, to go deeper in the word by means of discussions, by means of asking the right questions. Right? So what do you think? Have you understood this? You know, um, what do you think this is? How else could we do this? Right? Uh, how else can we grow in faith? Uh, how can we put these things in practice? What were some of your experiences as you tried this out? Right? Uh, the Bible talks about sharing the gospel. So what were some of your experiences? So people begin to share. right? Uh, and uh, so that's a skill that a cell group leader has to develop. Right? And some other skills maybe when it comes to maybe organizing skills right um, maybe a skill uh, with regard to communication okay so these are skills that we need to grow or in ourselves first but when it comes to raising up others we are talking about that being a coach you know you you identify hey this person uh, lacks these skills. These are things that the person needs to grow into, right? So how can I help them? Right now, you don't have to do it yourself, but you can maybe direct them to certain resources. You can you can say, hey, you know, if you if you read this book, it will be helpful for you to address this whole issue of, you know, uh, helping people, helping people. Um, or, or helping you facilitate a discussion, you know, or establishing a relationship. You're saying that you know, you 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 always don't know what to talk when you're meeting people. Um, this book will help you, or this article, this resource will help you. This video will help you um, to get over that. You know, you sometimes feel uh, very fearful and afraid uh, when it comes to these meetings, and you don't know how to do it well. Here's something that will help you. So uh, we are helping them um, grow in that skill. Right? So this is something that we can do to others as cell group leaders, others in our group. Right? Okay. Promote persistence, meaning it's all about endurance and it's all about perseverance. Right. So, uh, so you know, the thing is uh, temperamentally. We could be like this, you know, personality-wise, and uh, and you know, temperamentally, we could be like this, where we where we try out something, and uh, let's say, you know, it doesn't work or it requires more effort, then we eventually we just give up. Okay, first thing you try, okay, it's not it's not uh, it's not helping, um, and then you. You feel that it's difficult. It requires more effort. It requires you to wake up early, um, earlier than usual, uh, and all that discipline is required. Maybe it requires more commitment. You know, once you see that, you just give up. Or you know, you see that that this person is not really putting in that effort. Okay, so we need to you know make that person aware that. You know this particular, or you know, ministry or task. You know, you will feel this way. You know, it's all right. You will feel like giving up. Right? You will feel like um, there's more effort that is required, and so you know, you feel the first time that um, I, you don't have the strength. Right? You feel like giving up. 
you feel that, that there is no strength you feel that you're not good enough or you don't uh, you know you're not experienced enough or you're not wise enough or you feel like you don't know all the answers no problem don't give up keep going right so these are some things uh, we need to alert or bring awareness in others whom we are coaching right so we we'll say hey this is how you will feel you know physically you might feel tired or you know you, you may not feel like getting up you may not feel like preparing like when you you know maybe on the day of the cell group meeting you may feel like cancelling right emotionally you don't feel like going ahead with the meeting you may feel like all this um it's okay to feel that it's natural to have those kind of feelings but go for it keep persisting right um continue to continue to press in continue to uh, you know have endurance and stamina um so these are things that uh, we need to you know coach the people that is what the coach will say you know this is how your body will feel this is how you emotionally you will feel uh, so when when people are aware of it they'll see that okay you know this is this is this is what you know this person taught me uh, yes i will feel this way but i need to keep going okay because because otherwise people have a wrong understanding you know of uh, even like specifically about cell group leadership etc they feel okay if i don't feel like doing it if i don't feel like doing it, then i should not do it okay people come to that wrong conclusion right okay today i i didn't feel like getting up i didn't feel like you know reading i didn't feel like preparing so i don't want to do this no you know people need to know that sometimes yes you will feel that way and or maybe you know day in and day out but unless you build that strength unless you build that habit unless you build stamina you cannot overcome these things so you know and how do you build stamina by by going over it over and over again that's the only way to build strength right so yeah so teach them about persistence teach them about uh, uh, you know what uh, make them aware of the difficulty um, then they will uh, and also make them aware of the fact that Uh, if they do this they will overcome that difficulty it is possible to overcome it is so challenge challenge them to do that right um shape the environment which means build support remove barriers etc create options so so the thing is um you know many times in the in you know in our in our eagerness to build up leaders in our eagerness to uh you know to raise up uh, ministers uh what happens is we sometimes force the people you know there's a difference between motivating challenging and forcing someone who does not want to okay so or manipulating someone manipulating is you tell them you give them some reward you you telling them okay you know i'll if you do this i'll do that you know all this will not work in the long run right uh like people need to be willing okay yes it's difficult but at least people need to be willing and say okay uh, it is difficult for me uh, i don't know how to do it but i'm 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 willing to try it okay if that willingness is there uh, only then can we coach because if somebody doesn't want to do it or you know first of all they need to be they need to come to that place of desiring to minister or desiring to uh, you know to lead uh they may not know everything they may not understand everything they may have fears they may have difficult but but you know if that willingness is there okay i'm willing to learn i'm willing to try out uh, i'm scared i i don't have all the answers i feel that i'm in very inexperienced but i am i'm willing to try right you see so even if that uh, willingness is there then we can coach um we can help we can raise up the lead person right 
maybe you know if that person is not willing at all it's fine you know we don't have to waste our time right we can continue to you know uh, encourage them continue to walk with them continue to you know love them and uh, encourage them in the word and the spirit and and hopefully you know people they will come to a place of wanting to do it wanting to be you know uh, to, to be trained wanting to be equipped um so till such time you know, we can just you know let them be or you know we can walk with them right continue to be a friend continue to be a uh, a positive influence in their lives right uh, we can do that okay yeah. so any questions here any questions or any any of these experiences that you want to share we can do that any questions um any questions at all okay um has anyone started a bible study or a cell group uh, from the time we started the course um or or you are you know join the cell group from the time we started you know recently anybody like that Yeah. Like so, how many of you are actively part of a cell group? Is uh, Thomas? You have a cell group. You lead a cell group apart from the church. Uh, before pandemic, we had we mm. used to have a cell group four, uh, but okay. uh, now it's a little time. We have to restart in that. Oh, okay okay so you also did not have anything uh, happening online the cell group uh, online cell group is not happening it's not happening okay okay so it is just in yeah. person before the pandemic we used to gather pandemic. yeah before the pandemic we used to gather on wednesday uh, in 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 one of our church believers home so we used to okay. sit and study things okay okay fine fine um what about you dev dev are you like part of a cell group or are you leading okay so sid says uh, started last week on biblical character study okay wonderful so um so is this uh, okay so dev says no so sid is, is it something like um uh like only the youth or what kind of a group is this like is it a big group small group yeah it's only the youth sir the youth okay okay so is it uh, how many people would be there on an average like the first time i mean the first time we started we, we were like 15 of us okay. and most of them were missing so oh, okay 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 good so so then you know uh, you're already part of a group so it'll be good for you to you know you'll see all these things you know whatever we've been learning uh, you'll see some of these things and also uh, you'll have an opportunity to you know, try out right uh, when it comes to leading when it comes to you know right, right from like preparing to be a leader etc these are things that we can um, you know, can you'll, you'll observe and see in the group and also tr- you can also try these out Okay what about the others prince prince kanan kiran okay eren um, yeah you said there are these live groups cell groups that you are part of um, are you leading any cell group eren there's three or four groups you said um are you leading any cell group or you are attending these cell groups um i'm sorry i didn't understand you said yes so are you leading or attending i uh, just wanted to know um is, is there any cell group that you're leading okay yes pastor uh, you're leading Yes, yes, pastor. Okay, fine, fine. 
right? So the leading as well. Okay, Kannan is not part of any cell group. Um, you are part of the church, Kiran. But is there a cell group that you are part of? Is there a small cell group? Youth cell group. Okay, fine. Women. Okay. Right. Okay, so uh, I understand that, you know, uh, like different churches have different vision for cell group and it, it may not be typically like uh, what we, uh, what we've been learning so far, right, about small groups. Um, so like some, some cell groups are, you know, it, it's a Bible study, or some it's, uh, uh, you know, it's just a time of fellowship. Right, uh, etc. So, it could have various, um, uh, you know, objectives, like why the cell group meets uh, during the week. Maybe sometimes people feel that okay, um, this, you know, it's we just want people to be encouraged. Right, this gap of seven days, six days uh, between every, you know, Sunday service is like too much. So we just want people to be encouraged. Um, we don't want them to. You know, lose out on the, uh, you know, the fire to go down. You know, just to motivate, uh, you know, things like that. So the cell groups might have different objectives, but, um, but some of the things that we've been learning, you know, if you have an opportunity, you know, you can, you can, or if you get to start your own uh, cell group, you know, you can put it to practice, right? Or if you you are leading a church, a ministry, and you want to start cell groups in the church, right? So um, you can think of these things. Um, you can, you know, and and have a and put these things to practice, you know, because um, th so the advantage here is that we are not only learning something, you know, well. When the, when the group meets, they're obviously, you know, they're going to be studying the word, so they're learning something from the Bible. But from what we can put to practice, right, it's not just one person who's teaching, the others who are receiving, where everybody gets to, you know, grow and come to a place of teaching. Everybody gets to grow and uh, be disciples, right? And some of the issues, the challenges that they're facing in their lives, you know, facing as disciples in wanting to follow the Lord. Some of those things are being, you know, you can address that. Address that meaning, you know, you can, uh, some of those challenges can be um, spoken about and also solutions uh, can be, you know, recommended uh, and people can see the answers in their lives, right? Okay, so Prince says not yet, but you have Bible studies every evening. Okay, so yeah, so the same thing here. And I just wanted to share that. So we, you know, so it can either be about the the way the cell group functions. Okay, so you can maybe bring changes so that it becomes more about discipleship. Right. Uh, of course, it, again, it should not clash with the, you know, the vision or the objective of of that cell group, which the church has established, right? The church is saying that, uh, I mean, the church that you're part of, or, you know, the, so it should not. But if it's something that you are leading and uh, it, you have started, then you can bring in these things and you can try these um, uh, principles out, right? Um, so when it comes to raising others to leadership, you know, you can keep that in the back of your mind saying, okay, here are people who are, are coming and you know i see these different people i see these different um, strengths and weaknesses and i see these skills and abilities and potential so how can you know this person uh, be raised up as a leader you know how can this other person be raised up as a leader and and lead a cell group on their own or can they come to that place right right now they don't seem to have the interest or the inclination but they're at least happy to receive Right, so that's where they're coming, but you know, how can we take them further? So all these things you can think, right? You can think, pray, plan, and uh, and bring it, uh, bring it to pass. Right? Okay, so let's continue, and uh, let me start. Okay. 
Okay, so we we're just looking at uh, we looked at coaching and we looked at uh, we're looking at another uh, aspect of coaching, which is uh, mentoring. Right? So what does it mean to mentor a, another person? Anyone? When you say okay, uh, mentoring someone, what does it mean? Um, you can put in the chat also. Okay, guide someone um, biblically. Okay, yes, that's a that's a good answer. To guide someone. Okay, to guide, to advise, um, to equip. Okay. So it's a, it's a, it's it's another aspect of you know coaching someone, but uh, to be a mentor is to is to is to really grow a person, um, but it's to uh, you know the process involves uh, giving counsel, wise counsel, sharing experience, um, and sharing obviously from the Word of God because we're talking about spiritual things. Um, but it's more to do with um, uh, it, it's it's not to unload things or download things of you know it's it's a two way thing where the person is also receiving the person is also asking questions the person is uh, is also wanting to be wanting to reach uh, higher right that willingness and is there you know so uh, we see that. Uh, um, the way the Lord actually leads us, the Lord um, uh, actually builds us up and how uh, we have him as a role model, uh, as an example, the same way we can be to someone else, right? So we can be a mentor to someone in order to build that person up. Now, if you look at uh, 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 18, says, I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. You know, as a, as a father, um, uh, that's the kind of relationship the Lord says, you know, I will be a father and you will be my sons and daughters. So, so the way God deals with us when we deal with others, right? So God is our father. He's our heavenly father. And... Uh, uh, we are his children. So the same way, if we extend, you know, the same kind of um, help or uh, the same kind of ministry to others, to be spiritual fathers and mothers, and to develop others to be spiritual fathers and mothers, and not just remain as um, spiritual babies, right? So that we will say, you know, uh, is a uh, mentoring process or a mentoring relationship right so you know we develop people uh, as spiritual parents um, and then uh, we see certain characteristics of it where there is love there is care there is wanting the best for the person uh, and also wanting you know just like how a, you know, a father or a mother will uh, will want the best for the person will want that person to go beyond right beyond uh, you know the father and the mother you know there is, is the, the father will will feel proud if the son or the daughter uh, you know uh, reaches their level and goes beyond their level right say oh this person i mean this my son my daughter you know overtook me and went beyond i was capable of um, so you you feel proud Right. The same kind of uh, love and care, and uh, you know, uh, and uh, uh, the same perspective or the same kind of a mindset that we have is required in spiritual fathering or spiritual you know, parenting uh, another person. Right. So, so uh, some things to understand is uh, that. 
to understand that every individual is unique. Okay. So even as a parent, you realize that every child is unique. So you cannot slot a child into one particular box and say, okay, this child you know, has to be like this. Like every child is unique. Um, so even among sisters and brothers and so on, you know, siblings, um, each child is unique. They have their own personality. They have their own, you know, uh, temperament uh, and their gifts and so on. So we need to identify that and we need to help them be the best. You know, uh, without we 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 are not any any way called to make Xerox copies of you know, ourselves or Xerox copies of others, right? We can. Definitely show them the role models, show them the abilities, but also we need to, um, you know, give importance to the uniqueness with which God has created them. Okay, so that's something for us to keep in mind that each individual, each person is unique and different, right? Um, and so we need to understand that. Okay, so uh, when it comes to, again, spiritually, you know, being a parent to others, you know, we need a blueprint. Right. We need to end picture. Uh, what is the plan? What is the what is you know what is the what is the big picture? You know of how um, this person can be, or to where this person can, or to which extent this person can grow. Okay, so what is that picture? Big picture. Right? To have the blueprint uh, is important. So let's go through some of these, uh, you know, terms, um, some of these, um, you know, uh, some of these words that we are talking about. You know, when it comes to uh, spiritual, being a spiritual father, being a spiritual mother, uh, you know, this, you know, in the church circles, in the Christian circles, we always use that, you know, and sometimes we use it wrongly, right? We refer to someone who shared the gospel with us, you know, maybe that person shared the gospel. Or um, and then and that was it. We never met that person after that, right? We we are we born again because of the gospel that was shared to us by this person. And then we say, okay, that's my spiritual father or that's my spiritual mother. Um, you know, we use these terms like that. So, uh, but but actually, if you look at the terms spiritual parenting or spiritual fathering, right? Um, it means that someone who is actually leading us from uh, a place of maturity to mature to immaturity to maturity right which means like uh, we could be childish as children but we are growing up or someone who helps us grow in a, and who helps us in our journey to become uh, mature grown up uh, adults Spiritually, right? We're talking about that. Okay. Um, so if you if you look at uh, you know there are some spiritual teachers and spiritual fathers. Paul writes about that in one Corinthians four. Um, so he says you know though, though you may have many teachers or instructors, you you do not have many fathers. You know. So he, he here are some differences that we can look at. Okay. So being a spiritual teacher or instructor, one. There's one who teaches truths, but if you see a spiritual father um, or a mother, that person cares for the individual and helps the individual. Okay, so the objective is not just to, you know, instruct or to teach the truth, but also to care for that person. Right? Uh, maybe they have other needs to care for those needs. Right? The in terms of a spiritual instructor. You know, it can be a very formal interaction, right? Because it it is be maybe a meeting, uh, maybe a church meeting, maybe a you know maybe another maybe a study, maybe a, a cell group meeting. So it's a very formal interaction. Whereas when it comes to a spiritual father, it there might be formal interactions, but there are also informal interactions when we say informal we're saying okay it's not just an event a program but a spiritual father would be involved a spiritual mother would be involved in their lives right to find out 
okay what their likes are what their dislikes are what their disappointments are what their regrets are right and what their high points are what are they to so there are there are informal interactions also maybe they meeting over a cup of tea maybe they just you know um you know maybe going for a walk and then talking about these things right? so you have these informal interactions also right okay so a spiritual instructor would have curriculum specific topics um in order to address those things or bring understanding so we're not you know in any way demeaning that okay we need to understand that uh, when we are talking about spiritual fathering and mothering we're not saying that you know that uh, being a spiritual teacher or instructor has its role and place has definitely you know and and has its um, you know benefits and advantages we we need anointed teachers and instructors in the body of christ right there is a very important thing it's part of the fivefold ministry so we recognize that um but we're also talking about this other aspect the way uh, paul actually ministered being an apostle paul ministered and uh, he he had this concern and care um for uh, you know others in his team like timothy and titus and so on where he would uh, you know he would uh, be interested in all aspects of their life okay, not just formal interaction or formal teaching but also other aspects of their lives like um, paul was concerned about uh, you know we're going to look at that uh, in detail like we studied in kingdom builders paul and timothy you know the relationship and how he mentored how he built him up um, so we see that you know he was also concerned about his health of his physical health he also addressed some of his fears right and that's why he writes to him god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind he was also concerned about his uh, he knew that timothy was a young man so he would say you know let no one look down on your youth but you be an example right and so he he would address certain things like that personally um so from that we understand that okay a spiritual father much like the natural father would be interested in other aspects of their lives as well okay then we see that okay there is uh, you know you learn from the teaching uh, of the spiritual instructor but here we learn from the life example also um you know so how how one lives life how one faces challenges how one overcomes um you know all seasons of their life so from the life also you learn okay there is a so the, as a spiritual instructor where during the teaching time there is you know there is what we learn formally maybe in a classroom maybe you know like this in a classroom setting but when it comes to um spiritual fathering you know it's from everyday life okay so so that is what we see that uh, there is a difference and uh, you know here is an opportunity in cell group ministry to be a spiritual father or a spiritual mother and we need to recognize that and make use of that okay because um, as much as we are we have those you know formal meeting where we are talking about different things uh, where we are discussing you know in the live group we're doing this by like some of you you know described okay there is a character study and all that but here i mean in a, in a cell group you, know, you have an opportunity uh, to be a uh, a spiritual father to be a mentor to be a spiritual mother to someone because you know you have those moments also where you can informally um, influence and build others and build uh, bring them up to a place of maturity okay right okay so uh, okay we're going to go into uh, you know some of the details of this i think we'll pick it up in next class um we'll stop here so where we look into you know some of the details of what are the characteristics um, you know how how does one do that 
um and so it's it's good for us and lessons from the paul timothy relationship uh what paul did in order to build up timothy you know all these things uh we will we'll see so this is quite a you know a very interesting section that we will go into um but we will look at it in the next class right so because it's it's just one flow we can look at all these different aspects um of it okay so we will stop here okay so we're going to um just and uh, yeah and the next class we will will continue um okay right thank you god bless have a good uh, rest of the day see you bye